Hurricane Ian knocked out power for millions across Florida. That's right. And Melissa Chasis joins us now. She's the Florida State President of Duke Energy, which serves hundreds of thousands of customers in the state. Boy, Melissa, we're happy to speak to you because we know you guys certainly have your work yeah. cut out for you right now. Can you give us a better sense of the current situation you're in and have you seen anything like this in your career? Absolutely. Thank you for having us. Where we stand right now in the state of Florida, we serve 35 counties, about 2 million customers. Right now, we have about 680,000 customers without service, ranging from the Tampa Bay area through central Florida, really along the path of the, this very wide storm. Uh, with the 680,000 that we have off, uh, we have been able, though, to restore service to about 180,000 customers since uh, the storm started on the Gulf Coast in the Tampa Bay area. I'm wondering if you could tell us about some of the particular challenges, because we've seen that there's so many areas that are still underwater as you're trying to repair power lines. Uh, I, I have to imagine that that's a, not just a, a physical task, but also a logistical yeah. one. It is, you know, every storm is unique and brings different characteristics with it. And Hurricane Ivan, uh, I, uh, Ian, sorry, uh, has been a wide storm, slow moving, a lot of heavy rain, storm surge, and heavy winds. I think it's because it has moved slowly. It's created a unique set of challenges uh, for us, just logistically. Uh, with our crews to get out and do damage assessment and begin restoration. But because we plan 365 days a year, uh, we are prepared. We brought 10,000 crews in prior to the storm and staged them across the state of Florida. And what we will begin to do now is move them into base camps to be even closer to the hardest hit areas. So logistically, yes, it's presented some problems, but this is a very experienced team here in Florida and the resources that we've brought from other parts of uh, the Duke Energy Service Area and our contracting partners, uh, we are prepared, ready to get out there. Um, and again, wanna emphasize that we have started the restoration, uh, but in some areas, especially along the east coast of Florida, where the storm really just started to exit today. Uh, we are seeing winds still at high speeds that make it dangerous to take trucks out. And also uh, flooding has created a real challenge as well. Right, well, we are certainly glad to hear that you guys are prepared to hit the ground running and are already doing so. But I, I wanna ask you about the future looking ahead because you know this, obviously you're in Florida. This is a state that's gonna continue to get hit by hard storms. Uh, and people have asked in the past, what is it going to take to move some of these power lines underground so that every time we get hit by a hurricane, it won't be a matter of restoring the power, but actually being able to, you know, weather the storm. What are your thoughts on that? Is that feasible? Is that realistic? It's very much a part of the business uh, that we are doing now in the investments that we're making across our system, either installing net new lines underground or converting overhead lines to underground. But I'll take the opportunity to emphasize that all facilities, whether overhead or underground, are still really susceptible to all kinds of weather and environmental impacts. Uh, but we have a storm protection plan where we in, are investing in uh, wind re more wind resistant uh, wire, stronger poles, flood mitigation. Uh, so this is something that we are very committed to. Yeah, and Melissa, we know that it can be dangerous for crews to try and access power lines and make repairs, especially in floods. We, we saw, uh, as you were speaking, some video of, of live wires sparking and catching. We've seen other homes and things uh, catching on fire. How are crews able to stay safe? How are people who are in these affected areas? Uh, what's the best suggestions for how they stay safe? Yes, yeah, safety, number one priority for our crews and also for our customers as well. So regarding our crews, these are very highly trained professionals uh, that are in the, the energy industry. And uh, so they are prepared to work in tough circumstances um, and they are always have a keen, keen sense of situational awareness. Uh, safety briefings at the beginning, uh, during and after every 
work, every job, every project, um, and even trained really to look out for each other, which is an important part of keeping our crews safe. For our customers, uh, we spend a great amount of emphasis on highlighting to them that they need to stay away from downed power lines. They have to believe and uh, consider that any line could be energized. Uh, we want them to be safe with genera uh, generators in their homes as well. So we try to provide information on generator, generator safety as well. And we also ask that when the public sees our crews, uh, that they stay clear of the work zone and allow our employees to focus yeah. on getting the power back on. Yeah, good uh, advice. When will you get that power back on in South Florida, Melissa? So we are actually uh, communicating within uh, the next 24 hours when those estimated, when our customers can expect those estimated times of restoration. So in 24 uh, so hours, people be... will know when they may get their power back. Yes, and that's the key part, is really letting them know when to expect that they will get their estimated time of restoration. And then the next part is we will actually communicate by county what the estimated time of restoration is. Uh, we try to localize it as much as possible because we know how important our service is to getting our customers. They want to get back to living their lives and clean, cleaning up after uh, Hurricane Ian. And it's our job to make sure that that happens. And we are 100 percent committed to making that. And Melissa, uh, so occur. so people can prepare. What's the over under? Like how long will you know, how long do you think it will take to get everybody's power back? Well, we are still in our damage assessment uh, process. Uh, but that kind of information will come out over the next few days. So I don't want to uh, speculate, but this is our number one priority right now is making sure that we've got clear damage assessment um, models uh, that help us determine what those estimated times of restoration are. And then we will get that out really within the next 24 hours. All right. A lot of people counting on you, Melissa Chases. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking some time to talk to us. Thank you. Be safe.